The funny thing about growing up and stepping into the real world is you're almost always caught off guard, unprepared, and oblivious to what's going on around you, especially when it comes to your personal finances. That makes it easy for people to take advantage and walk all over you, which makes you second guess your decision to even step into the real world, all while your finances aren't improving. And then life just keeps hitting you with all these cheap shots over and over again. And then the next thing you know, you've lost any control you thought you had over your life and now your entire world is upside down. That was me. But I'm gonna tell you something, that's not gonna be you because you're taking the time right now to watch this video that's gonna help you see right through all of that mess. By the end of this video, you're gonna walk away with valuable financial advice that you can apply to your life immediately. A financial video made by a young adult for young adults. This video is about to be cold. So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you find this video helpful. By the way, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and I show you how to save money and make more money all while improving yourself every single day. Let's get into this video. So if you're anything like I was, you can't wait to get out of school and start working. You're sick and tired of studying and you're just ready to get out there and start making some dollars. Then you step into what seems like a comfortable, cushy situation where you're finally making money Money, more money than you've ever made before. It ain't six figures or nothing, but it's more than what you're used to. So you're on cloud nine, carefree and happy-go-lucky. That's where the trap starts. The trap is where your vices, your bad spending habits, and your lack of knowledge comes from when it comes to money. And the crazy thing is, the trap is the exact reason why adults tell you, it's hard being in the real world. You gotta pay bills now, it's real out here. But the problem isn't the bills or the real world. What makes it so hard for a lot of adults to pay bills is because they have credit card debt, a car note, no savings, and no backup plan whatsoever. You see, the trap is your decisions, whether it's you deciding to do something or not to do something. But either way, it affects your future. For the longest time, I couldn't understand what was so difficult about the real world or what was so challenging about paying bills on time. And the honest answer is you your decisions, the trap you created for yourself. Only the trap doesn't start when you graduate from school, it actually started several years ago, way before you graduated from high school, way before you even started high school. So let's start from the beginning. The first bit of financial advice I'm gonna give you is you have to set boundaries, and here's what I mean. When you're in middle school or high school and you make any money whatsoever, you're tempted to spend that money pretty much right away. When I was in school, something that all the kids were into was looking fresh and having the best video games. I'm talking about Nikes, Adidas, Jordans, the expensive shoes that we would all very soon grow out of. But you don't think about that when you're 12 years old and all you wanna do is fit in and impress everybody with your new Jordans that just came out yesterday. You know what I mean? When you're 14 years old and all you can think about is how you're gonna get past that mission in Grand Theft Auto, nothing else really matters. When you're beating all your friends in Call of Duty, you're not really worried about the weight of your decisions or how you spend your money because you're in your own little world with your friends. That's why you have to set boundaries for yourself because sure, when you're in middle school or high school, there aren't really any consequences for that. But those same behaviors are gonna follow you as an adult and if you don't discipline yourself and if you don't shake your bad habits now, you could be facing the same exact reality as most adults around you which is barely getting by, owing thousands in debt, and waking up every morning going to a job they hate just to make ends meet. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But you also gotta set boundaries for your friends because they'll really have you out here buying things that you've never planned on buying. Whenever I'd go out to the mall, amusement parks, or anywhere with my friends, I would never really plan on buying anything. But guess what happened? Hey man, let's go get something to eat. Only for us to get there and they're like, Hey man, I don't have any money. You, can you spot me, bro? Yeah. Some friends are trifling like that. And I was nice back then, so I went ahead and paid. But if I had the boundaries I have today, I would have told them to kick rocks. How are you going to suggest to me that we should go out to eat and you know you don't have any money? But what happened more often was that I was around people who were quick to spend their money. And it doesn't seem like it, but that stuff will rub off on you. On top of that, friends are like blue when you're younger. They're just like hitting you up all the time like... Hey man, we're going out to Foot Locker. Hey, we're going out to the food court. You wanna come? We're going to the basketball game, let's go. And as you get older, that turns into, hey, uh, we're going to, to Las Vegas. Hey, we're going out for drinks, let's go. Hey, we're going out to the club. You wanna come with us, bro? Look, you gotta know when to tell your friends no, cause all of that costs money and it adds up. 
And I'm not saying it's easy to do this. I get it. I mean, I had a very hard time doing this at first because I didn't like conflict and I didn't want my friends to feel like I was rejecting them. And if you're feeling that same way, I want you to understand something that I had to learn the hard way. The moment you step into the real world as a young adult and you're on your own, you get the same exact treatment as a 40 year old, which means the world is very unforgiving for you. They don't care if you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you're fair game. So you've got to look out for yourself first. Oh, your money isn't together? Oh well, whose fault is that? There's no mercy, forgiveness, or anything. There's no one holding your hand anymore. And even if somebody did want to help you, you're going to definitely feel a way about it. Trust me. That's why it's so important to sit down and figure out your money. And that's literally getting a piece of paper out and writing down the amount of money you make every single month after taxes and then writing down all of your expenses. That's the first step of taking control of your money because once you do that, you'll start to understand how much money is going in and out every month. And having that simple way of organizing your money is going to put you light years ahead of other adults because not a lot of us are doing it. I have a video that walks you through how to do just that step by step and I'll have it linked up here if you want to check it out right after this video. Now here's the key to doing that successfully setting financial goals for yourself. So let's say you know for a fact that you make $3,000 every month after tax. So then you say you wanna save $200 a month. That's setting a financial goal for yourself. Now, with you knowing that you wanna save $200 a month, now you can look at your expenses. So once you subtract your expenses, now you can give yourself a certain amount of money that you allow yourself to spend on fun things like entertainment and going out. So you can still hit your goal and still enjoy your life at the same time. And the reason why that's the key is because you're giving yourself a set amount and you're not just blindly spending money every weekend on going out or entertainment. You're, you're setting yourself a certain amount that you're giving yourself to spend. And once you spend it, that's, that's too bad. Oh, well, I gotta wait till next month. And when you're getting your money together and when you're figuring out how to organize it, the best advice I can give you is to keep it separate. Separate your checking and your savings account. Because if you have all your money in one place, it's gonna be very tempting to spend it. And I know because I've done it a thousand times. So it's always better to have some of your money out of sight, out of mind. It'll probably take you about a month or two to get it situated and figure out how much you wanna have in your checking versus how much you wanna have in your savings account. But once you do that, it's important to start learning about other places to put your money. It's especially as you start to get more established. And I have a video linked up here that'll show you exactly how to do that as well. Now here's some financial advice I've never heard anyone say before, but it's extremely important. Never feel like the way that you're making money right now is the end game. That's what I had to learn. Because I felt like once I graduated and got my degree, I was gonna be with the same company forever for my entire career and I would just slowly move up. And I had to evolve my way of thinking because that way of thinking creates a situation where you continue to work a job you hate because you feel like you can't go anywhere else making that kind of money. Which makes you feel like you have to tolerate being disrespected, mistreated, and underpaid when you can be replaced in the blink of an eye where you just feel like you're not even a person, you're just a number. That was my first taste of the real world. Now I'll say this, if you end up finding a career that you love and you just want to grow in the company and you see yourself being there for your entire career, then that's amazing. And I'd say go for it. But that's not always the case. And to be honest with you, it's not the norm. Careers aren't as peachy as they seem when you go out to a career fair or when they sit you down for an interview because these careers are packaged and presented in such a way that make you feel like you're about to step into a world of endless growth opportunities, mentorship, and just an overall positive experience. Talk to anyone you know that has a full-time job and tell me if they tell you any of that because I guarantee you the ones that do are few and far between. And the reason I'm making this part of my financial advice to you is because I think it's easy to forget that we can always keep our options open and there's no law that confines us to just one company or even one position in a company. You can go wherever you want, especially when you're young. Take it from the guy who just moved across the country and left his job for another company. It took me two years to realize this and it cost me more than I ever thought it would. Imagine giving your all to a company when you're getting nothing in return. Put yourself in my shoes where you're giving them your hours before and after work that you will never get back. You're giving them your sleep, your blood, your sweat, your stress, your anxiety. You're pouring your heart and soul into this job, right? What do you think that did for my mental and physical health, bro? I went home uncertain every day. I didn't know if I did a good job or not. I didn't know if I was healthy because I couldn't remember the last time that I got any real sleep. I ate like once a day. I worked seven days a week. I was stressed all the time. And it was because I had a fear in the back of my mind 
What if I lose my job? I had to realize that I was pouring so much of myself into something that wasn't pouring anything into me besides a paycheck. And I think that was the harshest way I had to learn what I'm about to tell you right now. Look out for your health. And I'm talking about your mental health and your physical health. Find time to exercise outside of work. And for me, it was hitting the gym and hitting the weights. You might like cardio, you might like to jog or go hiking, but find a way to exercise outside of work. I had to come to the realization that just because life is upside down right now doesn't mean my health also declines. It doesn't mean that I don't eat right or I don't drink my water because usually when people are under the stress that I just described, they just stop everything. They just give up. Then their eating habits go down the drain and they end up doing what I did and that's hitting up McDonald's every day which ended up making me feel like crap which made me not want to do anything and it definitely didn't make me want to go work out. Mentally, I just felt uncertain. You know what I mean? Like... I, I doubted myself a lot and I was on edge all the time because I felt like anything could go wrong at any given time. And at your job, you'll get this thing called paid time off or PTO, right? And sometimes you got to schedule that way in advance and take that day off so you can get your mind right. You can go take a walk. You can relax at the house. You can go watch a movie, read a book. I call those mental health days. And you'd be surprised at how much they can help you in the long run. And don't let your job finesse you out of your PTO. That is your time. You probably heard a lot of adults in your life tell you to come in early and leave late when you're on the job. You probably heard them say, work hard and give it your all. I think that gets taken out of context. And it gets taken so far out of context to the point where it affects your health. Like I took it way out of context. So think about the health risks that stress can give you. High blood pressure, and then you're not eating healthy, you're not working out, that can lead to heart disease, diabetes. And what I'm saying is, these things can lead to you paying medical bills for the rest of your life. But when you're young and you're out here just trying to make it, that's just an afterthought until boom, you hit a brick wall. It's not like anyone really prepares you for when this stuff happens. Instead, they just pass it off as, well, that's just life. They just accept it. Not me. Don't accept that mess. If you ever work a job where you're overworked to the point where it's affecting your health, or if you're working a job and you go home and all you can think about is that job and the stress that's on you, and all, every phone call you get is about work, you can always go somewhere else. Something that was hard for me to deal with was knowing that I could always be replaced, which meant I could always be fired or laid off. And it bothered me because I knew that I busted my tail to get to where I was to land a high skill, higher than average paying job. But that same job can tell you, well, you've been underperforming and you've been underperforming for the last three months. What? You haven't said anything like that for my entire time being here and I've asked for feedback. Well, you've been underperforming, so we're going to have to let you go. That didn't happen to me. That was just an example. But here's the thing. That could be the reality that you face with any job that you take on because there's way more you need to do to stay employed than just showing up on time. But that shouldn't freak you out the way it used to freak me out. Instead, that should spark something within you that makes you want to improve. I knew that my job could get rid of me at any time and I knew that my finances weren't ready for that. So that made me want to build a savings. It made me want to improve. So I did. And that's why I recommend that you protect yourself, not only by being disciplined, but by intentionally setting aside some money. For me, it was two savings accounts. One was an emergency fund and one was just my regular savings account. But my emergency fund had about a year's worth of rent in it and my savings account had about $3,500 in it. That way, if something did happen, I was prepared for it. You ever wonder why most adults walk around here miserable? It's because a lot of times they decided not to prepare themselves for emergencies. They decided not to educate themselves on how to manage their money. Something else I see a lot of people deciding not to do is something that actually blows my mind. They're deciding not to start a side hustle that brings them another stream of income. I think having a side hustle is one of the smartest things you can do financially because you're in control of it. You control the time you put into it and in a lot of cases, you can name your price. I can't stress this enough. I think it's so important that any young person starts a side hustle or at least tries a few side hustles because it can be a lot of fun. It can give you a consistent stream of income in addition to what you're making at work, which makes your life easier because saving becomes easier. I did it, and it's something that I still do to this day because in my side hustle, I don't answer to anybody. I set the amount of time that I put into it. And I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. This YouTube channel, for one, is a side hustle that pays me hundreds of dollars every month. I'm also working on an online course that helps you improve your personal finances, whether your goal is to save money or make more money. And once I finish it, I can name my price and sell it an unlimited amount of times. It takes time, but I really enjoy it. And eventually I can make a living doing this. 
but nobody really tells you to do this stuff. So I'm going to tell you while you're young, while you have energy and ambition, I challenge you to go out there and try a side hustle. What really got me serious about my side hustles was one of my bosses who eventually became my mentor. He saw all the pain and stress that I was going through at work. And one day he just pulled me to the side and asked me, he was like, hey, Reggie, why are you doing all that? And I was like, well, I'm required to. I have to do this. Plus, I'm trying to move up. I want to get on your level. He was like, why? No, you don't. If you knew how many hours I worked outside of work, inside of work, I'm basically making minimum wage. Sure, I have a six-figure salary, but I'm working way too many hours. And then he said this, if you keep this up, one day you'll wake up and you'll be 40, wondering where all the time went. Sure, you'll be with a good job and well-educated just like I am, but I'm not happy though. I don't get to see my family like I want to, and I wish I had something else other than my salary to fall back on. That got my attention. Now here's something that everyone tells you to get when you're younger, a credit card. And I agree with that, but you know what I don't agree with? The fact that no one really goes through and tells you the consequences of just continuously swiping your credit card aimlessly. I remember being told how important it was to have a credit card so I could build my credit so one day I could get approved for a house. Plus, I was told that once I moved out for the first time and get my first apartment, that they were going to run my credit to make sure that I was trustworthy. So I knew it was important to have a credit card. I also knew that I needed to pay at least the minimum payment on the credit card every month, but I just didn't really know why, and I didn't know what the consequences were if I didn't besides a late fee. All I knew was that I needed to pay on the credit card every month because if I didn't, that was debt. But I didn't really know so much of the consequences beyond that. All I knew was that I had an entire month to pay a minimum payment. But I didn't know that credit cards had crazy interest rates. I didn't know that even though you keep paying the minimum payment every month, that crazy interest rate still gets applied to what you still owe. So here's my advice. Credit cards are important and I think every responsible young adult should have one. And being that you're watching this video, I imagine you are a responsible young adult. But what I would say is you've got to be careful with it, which is why I would recommend if you're just getting started out with credit cards that you only buy small stuff with it. Again, this is just if you're getting started, so only do that at first. Maybe you're buying yourself some gas for your car. Maybe you're buying some groceries. That's a good time to use your credit card because what you're doing is you're using your credit card on something that you would have spent your money on anyways, which means you actually have the money for those things. That's using your credit card responsibly and you can pay it off every month and that's going to slowly build your credit score over time. And once you get comfortable, you can actually start using it on more expensive stuff like rent, utilities. But again, these are things that you would normally be spending your money on anyways. And the thing with this is you can actually use your credit card to earn you some money when you're doing this. Of course, you'll need to be a little more advanced with your credit cards and you'll really need to know what you're doing. But I'm not going to get too into that because I have an entire video about that. And it goes in depth and shows you how you can get free flights, free food, and just free stuff in general with the credit card strategy that I show you in the video. If you want to check that out right after this video, it's linked up here. Man. I have so much I want to add, but consider this to be a foundational video on how you start your financial journey. I have another video called the coldest money advice I can possibly give you. And it's basically what I would tell myself if I could go into a time machine and speak with my 18 year old self, that's the financial advice I would give myself. So you could also check that out. That goes hand in hand with this video. It's completely different stuff. And it'll really help you out on your financial journey. There's a ton of gems in that one too. So be sure to check that one out. I know I've given you a lot of videos to watch, but they're only going to help you. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.